Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. yeah. Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hebrews are coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hebrews are coming, coming, coming. Hebrews are coming, yeah. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. Hundred thousand, forty-four thousand. We ain't playing, yeah. Standing on these corners, yeah. We taking games, yeah. Put them in the Bible, yeah. Ezekiel 37, great and seated on me, yeah. Come see what we about. We'll change it out. We moving out. You my battle life. And what was the war? What you waiting here for? Come see what the hell you're facing. With D, he'll break the nation. Sounds like a little revelation. Read out. I want to start off by saying, call Hala, Yahweh, my Shimon, my Shiak, Yahweh, Shai. Who are we? Yahweh's can. What are we out here to do? It's our mission to wake our people up, the 12 lost tribes of Israel. That's the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans that you see in North, Cent Central, South America, and across the world. That's right. Let me start off with the book of 1 Corinthians 6 and 2. Off the shop. So people, just like, I'm gonna touch into really what the brother uh, Shapar brought on on Wednesday with Christianity, Catholicism, all these doctrines. What's it really doing to lead our people to salvation? And that's pretty much the topic of salvation of our people. So go ahead and read that, King. Uh, and it's the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 2. Bring it up. Do ye not know that the saints shall judge the world? That the saints shall judge the world. So the saints, obviously are the Israelites, they're going to be in a position where they're going to judge the world. If you are in a position to judge, that means you're in a position of power. Read. And if the world shall be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Right. Jump down to now uh, 9. Come. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Read. Be not deceived, mm -hmm. neither for fornicators, mm -hmm. nor idolaters, mm -hmm. nor adulteresses, mm -hmm. daughters, nor effeminate nor abuses them themselves with mankind. You see that? All those things, you see those things present within the Christian church nowadays. You see all those things present within the Catholic church nowadays. You see those things present within all these new doctrines. Didn't it just say that they will not inherit the kingdom? Um, Read it again, guys. Um, First Corinthians chapter six, verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived. Be not deceived. After that, give me a be not deceived. Come. God is not mine. Read. Neither fornicators. Neither fornicators. Nor idolaters. Mm -hmm. Nor adulterers. Uh huh. Nor effeminate. Read. Nor abusers of themselves with mankind. And see that? The first thing that it was saying about before it listed all those was be not deceived. Galatians uh, 6 and 7. Con. Read that. It's the book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. Uh -huh. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Once again, be not deceived. We're seeing a lot of deception in this world nowadays. Uh -huh. We're seeing a lot of false narratives, a lot of false philosophies on this planet that we, as the inhabitants, are suffering. And who are mostly suffering? Our people, uh -huh. so-called blacks, Hispanics, and natives. Because within these churches that we all been going to, you see all those things that they say that the Bible says, you know, you're not supposed to be. And yet they're there. So then how can the Christian church be your salvation? How can a, a Catholic church be the salvation of a so-called Hispanic man? It said no idolaters, right? But isn't Caesar Bogier an idolat uh, idolatrous figure? And he's all over the Catholic church. So how can a, a, a you know, a image of a dead man He's now revered as a god, right? How can he be your salvation if he's dead? Right the so-called black man, so-called Hispanic man don't actually think about it. Instead, what they'll do is they'll just follow whatever, uh, you know, comes out the mouth of said pastors. Nonsense. Nonsense. Go ahead and read that precept. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Bring it out. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Woe be unto the pastors. Why? Because the pastors that are out here, they're not actually teaching truth. Right. They're not teaching how our people can get salvation. 
That's the thing. The black man and the so-called Hispanic man need salvation. Oh. We're the only people who constantly goes through these struggles that we've been pre uh, pre present in our lives within the past, what, 400 years? Right. Everybody else lets the, gets to live good, but where's our salvation? Bring it out. We don't have none. The so-called black woman is out here still shaking ass for money. The so-called black man is still killing his own brother. The so-called Hispanic man is still running drug games. Where's the salvation of all people? None of these things are going to save us at all. What do we do? We have no option. So we run to what? Esau and other cultures and their philosophy. We come out. We do have an option. And it's this book right here that none of us want to actually pick up and read. The Bible. You see, our people right now, we're stuck with what? Being complacent in a place that holds us in captivity. We're, we're happy being slaves. The so-called Hispanic man is happy that he got to work for another uh, group of people when they stole this land from him. But that's the problem with our people. Let me get uh, John uh, 8 and 32. Oh. Because we are still deceived and we're still held down in this place. They don't have physical chains on us no more. Okay, cool. But well, what do they have now? Mental chains on you. And we as so-called blacks and Hispanics and the Native Americans, we have to break those chains. Right. We have to find out what is our salvation because without that, without knowing anything, we'll never know what our salvation is. Not unless we actually read these scripts. The problem is we think now we're saved because of some BS that some dude who eats uh, pork Every day said, mind you, how can you be saved? When you put ED at the end of any word, that suffix now means it's past tense. So for all these people out here talking about they saved, how are you saved when it's past tense? Right. And saved from what? That's the better question too. What do you say for? You step outside and the, the police could gun you down just for being a so-called brown man. So what, how are you saved? Bring it out, babe. How are you saved? How are we saved? These pastors are not teaching the truth. What are they doing? Read. It's the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. Bring it out. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. When you read this Bible and you seek the truth, you will understand what salvation is. But if I ask anybody in my family, if I ask the so-called black man who's above me in age, the so-called you know? Hispanic man above me in age, I can ask them, what is the salvation of all people? They don't have an answer. I can ask them, what is the so-called black man doing for his people? Come here, sister. Let me talk to you for two minutes. Yes, how are you doing, sister? Good, how are you? So, you know what we out here to do, sister? Come look. So, what we out here to do is wake our people up, sister. Right. You, obviously, we've worked together, so I know you are a so-called African-American. So, I'll get straight to the point. You, sister, what you coming from the tribe of Judah. Now, how do we know this? All you got to do is read the Bible itself, read the prophecies, read the mannerisms of these people, the way they talk, the way they have their customs, and you can clearly see that it's our people. You go through history, you can also see that it's clearly our people. We are the 12 lost tribes of Israel, the true children of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the true firstborns of God that's in the Bible. Oh, Nobody man. teaches us that. Oh. Instead, they say, well, what? We're just niggas and spicks. But go to church every Sunday, give your money to all the pastors, pay all your tithes. Meanwhile, your people at the, are still at the bottom. You still got the, the deacon, he telling you, put the money in the plate, but he's selling drugs through the back. The pastor, he telling you to put money in the plate, but he's still eating pork. So how is it that these people, go ahead and grab that again in Jeremiah 23. And this is within the Bible. They don't teach us the actual truth. Yes, during slavery, they made us stop reading. Why? Because every time we read this, there was a revolt. They realized that, oh snap. When they read this book, they actually realize who they actually are. Matt Turner. Nat Turner, a lot of revolts that happened in, that happened in the Caribbean islands, in Jamaica, Barbados, you feel me? So we just gonna get, uh, you got, you had something? No, nah, I got that Jeremiah 23. Okay, go ahead and read that. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter 23, verse one. Bring it out. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep. Do you know what woe means, sister? You know what I mean? It means destruction. So destruction, read. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy 
and scatter the sheep of my pasture. They destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. You say that's my bag, right? That's what? Possessive, right? It's yours. So when God right here is talking to them, right? He's talking about his children, right. my people, my people. That's possessive. So he's telling the pastors and he's condemning them. Destruction unto you for what? For destroying us. All we've been taught, and we grew up in all these churches too. We've been around the block. All we've done is go out there, listen to whatever they got to say. They read maybe one or two verses throughout the whole three hours that you did, right? They pass the plate around. Doom, 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 music all day. At least four times. Four times, right? And then what did you actually learn about yourself? <laughs> you got to get going? Yeah, but I quit there, so I won't see you there anymore. No, I don't work there no more. Neither do I. I quit. Okay. Well, if you want, anybody can get calm. Just check us out. We're here to teach and wake our people up and edify and let our people know that they're the true princes and princesses on this earth. All right, sister, you have a good day. All right, calm. Back to the uh, lesson. So, you got that in Jeremiah. Go ahead and read that out. Jeremiah 23. Calm. It's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 23, verse 1. Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture. Come. Saith the Lord. You see that? Saith the Lord, Yahweh. Destruction unto these pastors because they're teaching what? A false narrative on uh, salvation. They're teaching false doctrines. I have yet to see somebody who's in the Christian church say they're actually saved and then not die after that. Everybody that I know, that what? That says they're a Christian, whether they be celebrities or people within your family and friends, they be what? Oh, I'm a Christian all my life. I'm saved. I'm saved. They 60 years old, die from God. What are you beast. saved from? What are you saved from? Right. And that's the thing. Destruction must happen to these pastors because this is what they're teaching to all people. That you could forget everything that you've done because you're saved. Make it make sense. Go ahead and read that. It's the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 13. But he, After that, Romans, um, Matthew chapter 24 verse 13 But he that shall endure unto the end uh, The same shall be saved The same shall be saved You gotta endure until the end You cannot get dumped in water five times Throughout your life And say yeah I'm saved and that's all good That That's not how salvation comes I have can anybody please show me in the book where somebody got dumped in water and boom, that's it. I have yet to see it. Have any of y'all brothers seen it? Nope. I have yet to see it. Dude get dumped in water and then the right after, it don't even got to be the next day. An hour later, you find him in the club sleeping with different men's wives. And but different I, men. Right, right. And yet, what's he out here? Well, he just got dumped in water. Now right. you're just a wet homo. Come so now you got this dude or this female, whoever, getting dumped in water, coming out, talking about they're saved, and then they just continue on with the folly that they were doing previously prior to being dropped in water. Man. And then it gets even crazy and more vexing of the spirit when they decide to go and say, now we're going to dump the children in water. Damn. Right. 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 I got dumped right. in the Catholic church right. in the water when I was like, what, five? What do I need to be saved from, and what do I even know with sin or anything about life is as a, as a five year old? Oh, man. Bring it out. Out of control. Out of control. You five years old, you still learning what? You ABC, how to say your name? Out of control. You feel me? But Get no, out. we're going to grab this baby that don't know nothing about life. We're going to dump him in water and now say that baby's saved. And they're going to hold him down, too. And they're going to hold him down on some weird stuff. But that's the Catholic Church. And yet, this is what they be out here doing. Teaching these false doctrines out here with the uh, you know madness, and it's mad vexing because then look, it brings utter destruction okay. onto our people when you go and actually baptize that baby, and then now that baby grows up thinking that they're actually saved. You know, a grown person, yeah, they get dumped and they come out. They still might be like, okay, I could actually, you know, I might actually fight this, or they continue in the folly, but that's a grown person. They got told something, okay. 
But when you do that to a child and then they grow up with that mindset, it's completely different. It, it's more actually, uh, uh, it's very more destructive. Very more destructive when you already bring that child up in that type of mindset. Whether it could be, you know, anything negative. So, these pastors, they really don't understand what they're talking about. You got that in Romans? Huh. Con. Go ahead and read that. It's the book of Romans, chapter 13, verse 11. Bring it out. And that, knowing the time, that now is high time. Now is high time. So-called black woman, so-called black man, so-called Hispanic woman, so-called Hispanic man, so-called Native American man, so-called Native American woman. Now is high time. Read. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time. To awake out of sleep. To awake out your sleep and realize what true salvation is. To awake out of the philosophies and doctrines of Catholicism, Christianity, of uh, baptism and all that. And actually understand the true scriptures on what your salvation is. Right, because that's what we need. Nobody needs salvation more than us. Um. We need to understand that we as a people collectively are at, at the bottom. We're not even at the bottom no more. We at negative 500. We're trash. It's the truth. And I love my people, but I got to call it how it is. A spade's a spade. The so-called Dominican man, all he want to do is what? Coquetia, ta en chelcha, en fiesta, bebiendo. You doing all this, but yet you still hang your own. How is it que hay gente de Europa que están viviendo en República Dominicana, no le hacen nada, pero tú estás matando tu propio hermano. That's Saque la palabra. You got all these heathens and other people that live in your islands and within your countries, the Northern Kingdom, right? And they'll do nothing. It'll be Moabites, a uh, uh, Ammonites, Esau, Ishmael. They be all up in our lands, living their life good. We're still at the bottom. They won't do nothing to them, but they'll still kill each other every day. Yup. Right. You know Tell why? about the curses. Because, yes, it comes through the curses That's and it. also because you once again have this false narrative of being saved and because you don't understand salvation. You think because once again you're still saved, hey, I could go kill my brother, I could go sleep with his wife, I could go sell drugs in my community, and guess what? I'm all good. Because when I die, hey, I believed on Christ and I, and I got dumped in water, I, I'm saved now. Right. So no matter how much uh, crap I did in my life that was wicked, I'm still saved, I'm good. Go ahead and read, King. Okay? Oh. You had a precept or not? Yeah, I had a precept. Okay, bring that out. It's the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 68. Bring it out. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. The Lord God of Israel, read. For he hath visited and redeemed his people. Redeemed his people. This is salvation. And he hath raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. No, no, a horse, uh, a horn of destruction. A horn of salvation. A horn of salvation, read. For us in the house of his servant David for us salvation is only for the so-called black man salvation is only for the so-called Hispanic man right salvation is only for the so-called Native American man no salvation is for us we need salvation there aren't abortion clinics all up in uh Esau's communities nope there aren't abortion clinics all up in Moabite's communities nope but you got them everywhere in yours they don't have 15 7 to sell you backwards in the Esau communities. They don't have 15 smoke shops in the uh, Moabites communities or Ishmael. But they're all in our communities to do what? To further promote our own destruction and demise. And what do we do? Instead of actually reading these scripts and realizing that we need to stay away from those things. Because once again, what's that mindset? I'm already saved. I'm going to run right into that smoke shop and I'm going to buy all the backwoods I want. Mm -hmm. I'm going to run into that uh, into that liquor store and I'm going to get drunk as hell because I'm already saved. Go ahead and read. Come on, verse 70. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, mm -hmm. which have been since the world began. Since the world began. Mm -hmm. Salvation has only been taught, preached oh, unto the children of Israel. Oh. And yet, if you still don't know who that is, you're blind. Because it's very blatantly obvious who the children of Israel are. Stubborn, uh, stiff neck, right, dumb, sodish. Who is that? Uh, head as hard as flint. Who is that? It ain't, it ain't. You could look. We be out here. We talk to Esau. We talk to Moab, and they could get it much quicker. 
they can understand this much quicker. Right. They'll be like, you know what? Whether they adhere to it and be like, all right, that's what happened. You know, yeah, God's so-called black man, Christ's so-called black man, I'm gonna be a slave, cool, cool. Or they just, you know, continue on in their folly. But they'll accept it and listen to it rather than to uh, your own people. You sit here and show Jake 300 precepts on how he's the actual child of Judah, the child of Reuben, the child of Simeon, the child of Ephraim, Naphtali, and so on. And yet, guess what? That nigga still won't get it. Nope. Man. He still look at you and be like, nah. But yet, once again, it all comes from these philosophies and from the doctrines that these false pastors be teaching. Giving away the blessing. Giving away the blessing. Casting the, uh, the, the pearls to the swine. And isn't that funny that Esau was the one that gave away his blessing and they want to be exactly like uh, Esau. See that? Con. That's a good point right there. Go ahead and bring that out. And after that, grab me uh, John 14. Oh. It's the book of Deuteronomy chapter 9 verse 13. Furthermore, the Lord spake unto me, saying, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. It is a stiff-necked people. I'm sorry, so-called black man. I'm sorry, so-called Hispanic man, but we are some of the most stubborn, stiff-necked, hard-headed people on the planet because we do not listen. I've told my, yo, my grandmother had uh, open lung surgery for smoking, right? What happens? I go visit her, boom, what's she doing right after? Went smoking. right back to smoking. You see how dumb all Damn. people are? Yeah, come outside with me real quick. I go home, I'm like, yeah, let me go home real quick, see my fam. Yeah, go outside real quick, come. Uh, what you about to do? I'm about to go smoke. Woman, you just had surgery. Man. But that's the madness of what? These people right here. These 12 tribes. Bring our own destruction. We, these people right here, we bring our own destruction because of just how hard-headed and stubborn we are. Bring it out. The so-called black man, so-called black woman actually needs to stop being hard-headed and learn correction Wake and rebuke. I'm sorry. Y'all act like y'all not uh, even from these households of being a so-called Hispanic man or so-called black man. By the way that y'all act now when somebody tells you to correct yourself. Y'all been in your households and your parents corrected yourself. Now you actually grown up. You don't want correction because you think you too good. You grown. Brother, put the blunt down. Put the cigarette down. Right. Sister, stop shaking your ass. Right. But you got that false narrative of what? I'm saved. Wake them up. Cover them cheeks. Go ahead and uh, bring that precept out. Right? Um, it's the book of John chapter 4 verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship. See, we know what we worship. And that's why these false doctrines have to get, what, dismantled. Because the whole, oh, I'm saved mindset, it comes from what? A false doctrine. Oh. They don't know what they're worshiping. We know what we're worshiping. And we could gladly sit up here and tell you, hey, we're not saved yet. It's a fact. We could say that because what? Because we know what salvation is. And it hasn't happened yet. If we're still here in America, still as slaves paying taxes to the heathen, Guess what? We ain't saved yet. Right. If we still working for other people and we out here still got to pay bills and buy and pay for groceries and all these things, we're not saved yet. That's right. right. If we out here still doing the madness, sleeping around with each other's wives, women out here still selling their bodies, selling drugs, killing one another, that's what we doing. Guess what, so-called black man? Guess what, so-called Hispanic man? You are not saved. Wake Your pastor up. been lying to you. Get out. You cannot be saved, so-called black man, and step outside and catch a bullet to the dome. That, how? But yet, once again, these are the false doctrines of good old Christianity, right. Catholicism, Lutherism. Where's all that stuff in the Bible? Right. I have yet to see, oh, the the evangelist, Pentecostal, epic, e escapodal, and all this. Where's that in the scripts? The Epicurean. Epicurean, escapodal, and all this stuff. Where is that? So they go create all these false doctrines and teach false things that are not in the script, and now our people think that they already have received salvation. Our people think that what they got is salvation just by going and getting dumped in water. Make it make sense! Uh, let me get... Uh, and that's what we're out here to do is to wake all people up our people nobody needs waking up more than our people i could go talk to ishmael and tell them you're ishmael and guess what they'll know yes i'm ishmael i could show 
uh, Moab, his history, and he'll recognize that he's Moab. Oh, ho, ho, look at this guy. And look who it is. Look who it's it is. One of the fake pastors. The false Right pastor. on time. We were just talking about you. They come out. Look, and he got it upside down. Wait, right? He got it upside down. That's where your soul is going. Of Christianity. It's Out of control. That's the doctrine of Catholicism. It's an upside down do doctrine. We read earlier in 1 Corinthians 6 and 9 that none of those things that were listed, all those wicked people, right? It, it said that they will not inherit the kingdom. They were called what? Righteous or unrighteous? I unrighteous. Unrighteous. But they're, they think they're righteous because they're already saved in their heads. Madness. It's madness. Essentially, all people, what they do is they look like a, a hamster running in a wheel. You think you're getting somewhere, but you're actually not. Right. You're still in the same spot. Go ahead and read that, King. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 21. Bring it out. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone's going to... Go into the kingdom of heaven when they say Lord, Lord on that day. Why? Because once again, it's that these false doctrines that got them stuck. A lot of them won't even know what the Lord looked like when he come back. Nope. A lot of people expect, uh, where he at? This guy over here, Caesar Bogier. Mm, they A gonna, lot of people expect this dude to be coming through the cracked sky. They're going to think it's an alien invasion. Yeah, they're going to think it's alien invasion. They're going to think that that dude's coming with... Care Bears and rainbows and fluffy animals. Nah. Right. Independence Day. Right. The Lord coming with destruction. Read. Come. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Right. But he that doeth the will of my Father, mm -hmm. which is in heaven. He that doeth the will. Jump down to verse 24. Come. He that doeth the will of his father. Who's yep. his father? We know who his father is. Yahweh. Yeah, Our right. father. Can I read 23? Khan, read that. And then will I profess unto them, mm -hmm. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Ye that work iniquity. Why? Because, hey, I'm saved. I'm going to go hit this blunt. I'm saved. Hey, it's all right. That brother won't know. He at this, work. I'm going to eat this one. I'm going to eat this one, right? <laughs> I'm saved. I'm going to have a ham dinner. A ham dinner, right. right. Sliced yeah. ham and Coca-Cola for two weeks. I'm going to celebrate Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm going to celebrate <laughs> Christmas because of what? I'm saved. And that and that leads to what? Iniquity. It leads to foolishness and madness. Right. I'm saved. I got dumped in water. So, hey, you know what? Oh, that brother, he at work now. His wife alone. Let me, let me slide to the crib now. That's madness. That's what you call straight up blasphemy of the word. How dare y'all sit up here and try to say that you're saved? How dare y'all come up here and, and throw out these uh, uh, BS doctrines? Oh, y'all finished. finished. You see, and that's our problem with our people. Man. We out here, we think that Moab is our salvation. We think that this whole called white man is our salvation. Hey, he's definitely the, getting a, a lummy long time yeah, tonight. He getting a lummy long time, $5 dude. <laughs> he, get, he getting a lummy long time. Uh, come on, now he, like, he Jake get, think. Hey, he getting a sookie sookie $5. Oh, yeah. Jake think that he could run into all these other coaches and they will be his salvation. How? Jake, how? That's my question. Make make how sense. does you being a so-called black man jump into the culture and the customs of a uh, of an Asian man and you think now that that's good for all your people and y'all just gonna be saved. Right. No, nigga, you still at the bottom. Your people still eating scraps. Your people still struggling. Working nine to five or, or, or doing a, a eight to seven, a eight to nine, slaving. But what? I guarantee you if I asked that brother though, I would have asked him, hey, are you saved? He would have said, hell yeah, I'm saved. I got dumped in water. He said, I believe on the blood yeah, of Jesus. Believe. They all believe. Everybody gets dumped in water. <laughs> and yet not a single person that's been out here dumped in water has been saved. Nope. And this is something that is, is you know, it's laughable. But at the same time, it's sad. Because all people actually fall for these foolish games. All people actually fall for these mind tricks. All people are the only ones dumb enough and gullible enough to actually sit there and say, you know what, that white man's right. Make it make sense. That damn hammy right there, that hammite's right. Hammy. 
Our people don't get it. You got that? From? Uh, what you told me? Uh, I'm still on 24. Matthew 7, 24. <laughs> Con, drop that. Let me get uh, 1 John 2 and 3. Uh -huh. So, people really just need to get that through their heads. And the people that need to get it through their heads, it's not everybody. We're not talking to everybody. We are only here for our people. What you're seeing right now is the greatest thing ever to happen. And this scares the heathens. This is why they'll teach you false narratives of salvation. They, they want to include themselves into our salvation. Look, talk about the heathen and they, the shall they shall arise.